What is up enthusiasts, it is Cedar Flags here and welcome back to another one of my videos. So in the past, I have done a series of videos talking about if I were the certain owners of roller coaster related companies, including theme park chains like Cedar Fair and Six Flags and roller coaster designers like B&M and RMC. But today, I wanted to do something a little different, but staying on the same series. I wanted to put myself into the perspective of some owners of independent parks. Unlike chain parks, independent parks are owned, but they are their own separate entity. They are not a part of a bigger chain or company, they are its own little thing. For example, Holiday World and Knobles are owned by certain groups that only own those parks. So let's get right into the video. I'm going to see some independent parks all across the United States, and I would tell you what I would add or change. So let's get right into it. This is Cedar Flags, and today, I'm going to tell you what I would do if I owned certain independent parks. The first park I want to talk about is a park that I visited for the first and only time last year. It is Holiday World in southern Indiana. This park is full of wooden roller coasters and some steel ones like Thunderbird and Howler. And for Holiday World, if I owned the park, the first thing I would do is add a brand new steel family coaster now i would want to put this coaster in either the christmas area or the fourth of july area because none of these areas have a major coaster well halloween has two and thanksgiving has two so i would like to organize and even the park out so what would this coaster be my choice would be a zamperla moto coaster so i would want to make it similar to something like pony express and maybe theme it to santa's reindeer I think this would be an absolutely adorable concept, or for the 4th of July section, you could theme it as motorcycles, like the old Americana motorcycles. I think that would be really cool. I really think this would be the perfect fit for the park, as it would 1. be a good step in between Howler and Raven, 2. be a good coaster for the front of the park, and 3. have a great opportunity to extend the opportunity they have for theming. I think this would be the perfect fit here. and. Holiday World's next potential coaster. The next park I want to talk about is Knobles in Ellisburg, Pennsylvania. This park is so near and dear to my heart. This park is basically a time capsule that leads guests back to a period of time that I never got to experience. Around the 1940s and 50s, this takes you back to the sock hop era of trolley parks. And let me say, they do a really good job at either restoring older rides or two, replicating older rides that were forgotten or went extinct, for example, the Flying Turns. So, why don't they continue that tradition of old-fashioned rides? Why don't they bring back the Rotor? Now, if you don't know, the Rotor was a very popular model back in the day, but now, there are only two left in the northeastern United States, and the numbers are shrinking fast. The only two left are at Canopy Lake Park and Sylvian Lake, and so, I think a third rotor in this region would be absolutely incredible. Put it near the Skloosh area because there really isn't anything by that, and I think this would be a perfect opportunity. Many people would flock to this ride because it would be one of the only ones left in the country. Heck, the world. And I think it would continue the tradition of Knobles bringing back a classic, well-loved ride. The next park I want to talk about is Maury's Piers, located at Wildwood, New Jersey. And when it comes to boardwalk parks, it doesn't get much better than this. Three separate piers filled to the brim with thrills. This park has it all, and it seems like they're, well, running out of land, I could say the least. And when it comes to space, they really do not have that much to work with. And so I was thinking about it, where could they build something new? And then I remembered, they own a fourth pier. In between the two northern piers, there is what used to be called the Hunt Pier, otherwise known as Dinosaur Beach. If you don't know, this used to be a separate amusement park, but then was bought out by Maurice Piers and is now vacant and filled with some warehouses that may or may not have some storage. But nonetheless, it seems pretty run down in the center of a major amusement park resort. So what would I do? Well, I would utilize some of this land to build some new rides or relocate some of the older rides. Maybe make this a part of the Northern Pier because it is right next to it. And I feel like this would definitely add some opportunity and potential 
for more rides and more land at Maurice Piers. Because, let's be honest, that is exactly what they need. If they didn't utilize this pier, when they made a new ride, they would probably have to get rid of another ride. They were originally going to build a ride here back in the day. It was going to be a GCI Woody, but those plans ended up falling through. So we know that they have interest in building something at this fourth pier, but to this day, we don't know what. The next park I want to talk about is a park that I have been to a handful of times. It is Waldemere in Erie, Pennsylvania. This classic style park right on the Lake Erie coastline is headlined by the one and only Ravine Flyer 2, one of the most heavily regarded wooden coasters on the planet. This gravity group goes over a bridge twice and has some incredible elements to it, including those airtime hills right over the road. This roller coaster is definitely the headline attraction here, but what if they decided to get another? If you don't know, this park has been expanding like crazy in the past few years. They have since doubled their water park, since are building a new water coaster, and since have built a brand new Zamperla Revolution 360, named Chaos. This ride is incredible, and this park is incredible as well. You could tell that this park definitely has a budget, and I think that they want to spill that budget soon. And if I were the owner, I would definitely do so, in the form of a Gerslauer Eurofighter. I think a Gerslauer Eurofighter would be the perfect fit for this park and be another headline attraction. With a Ravine Flyer, you have that traditional style wooden coaster with the low to the ground turns and ejector airtime hills. Well, you would have a steel inversion machine that focuses on hang time and beyond vertical drops. This would be such a good one two punch, and I would want to put this at the other side of the park. Maybe be a smaller clone of something like Adrenaline Peak or Hydrus and that would cost it around $5 million, or around the same price of Steel Dragon, which is also at the park. I think the park could definitely afford this, and I think that this would be such a perfect fit, as the nearest hero fighter is a few hours away in Darien Lake, and other than that, there aren't many others. But anyways, I think this would be the golden fit for this park. So, the last park I want to talk about in this video is actually a park that I have not been to at the moment. It is Mount Olympus at Wisconsin Dells in Wisconsin. Now, if you don't know about Wisconsin Dells, it is in the middle of nowhere when it comes to other roller coasters, so competition is pretty weak. It is in between cities like Minneapolis and Chicago, and they are pretty far drives. So, the sky is really the limit, but looking at the realistic option, I would love to see two new additions here. The first would be a Skyrocket 2 by Premier Rides. This would fill in the gap of a steel coaster that is major and a launch coaster at the park. I think this would do such wonders for the park and be the new shining star, at least for the general public, as they would see that hang time and think, oh my goodness, this would be amazing. So I want to do a little bit of a two for one, because Mount Olympus is mainly known for its water park when it comes to crowds. So what would I do? I would expand the indoor water park. If you don't know about Wisconsin, it's a little north, and let's just say that you can't have year-round water parks, or not even most of the year-round water parks. So, expand the indoor water park as much as possible. Right next to the water park on the north side, there is a massive field of grass that I think the park could do wonders with, with adding new water slides and a new complex of indoor slides. So, with both a Skyrocket 2 and an indoor water park expansion, I think this park would be pretty set for a while. So what do you think about all of these? I decided to make a video on this because I see a lot of holes and gaps in several private parks, and I thought that this would be such a cool concept for a video. So let me know what you think down in the comments below, and let me know what you would change. Anyways, this is Cedar Flags, and I'll see you all later.